Hey everybody and welcome to another Learning Statistics with Jamovi video. In this one, we're not going to do an analysis per se, but I do want to explore a particular thing that I have been ignoring in each of these modules. There is a, another way to test whether or not your data is normally distributed. You can use the Shapiro Vilk test as I have done in pretty much all of my videos, but then there is an option that I have not been checking and that is the QQ plot. So let me pull in here. I'm not going to go through this entire uh, web page, but let me pull in here uh, and uh, zoom in just a little bit so you can read. Um, understanding QQ plots. This is from the University of Virginia Library Research Data Services and Sciences. And it's a, you can pause it to get more in-depth information about what a QQ plot is. But what it is, is it is a theoretical quantile quantile plot. It's just a graphical tool uh, to help us understand whether or not a particular value uh, or, or particular set of values, excuse me, particular values in our data set are following some kind of theoretical quantile. So we have our sample. And then we plot that against our theoretical quantiles. And in many cases, it is via a normal, uh, a normal zero one uh, kind of plot. Of course, it's, it's one way to check whether or not samples are normally distributed rather than using the Shapiro Vilt test, which essentially uh, summarizes the entire data set into a single number that we then use. Now, I don't use QQ plots, but I'm sure there are people out there that use them. And rather than constantly ignoring them, I will continue to ignore them in my broader videos on statistical techniques. So if you want to know more about QQ plot, this is the video to keep watching. I'm sure there are people who are like, wait, he's not checking QQ plots. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? And that's a valid question. And uh, if you want to know more about QQ plots, here you go. Um, I'm leaving it up here. And so we've done several Jamovi techniques, modules, statistical techniques to help us answer various design based questions. And one of the things that I keep doing is ignoring QQ plots. And in some of my other videos, I grab QQ plots just, you know, for funsies. But in this one, in this video, particular video, I want to go uh, describe them in a little bit more detail and show you what they look like in several different um, modules in Jamovi for various for various variables and samples that you have. So, again, this is from the University of Virginia, and they explain and also how to do it in R if you really want to. Uh, but the QQ plots in Jamovi are slightly different than what you see here. So on the X axis is going to be the theoretical quantile um, plot. And I have a I have an extension that makes this bigger, but. <laughs> Only in some ways, uh, I have to hover over it to make it bigger. So we have three theoretical quantiles in the on the x-axis, and then we have the sample quantiles in the y-axis. However, Jamovi doesn't do the y-axis as sample quantiles, as you see in pretty much most other QQ plots. But what this is doing is taking the values of the quantiles. Quantiles are just four percentile ranges. So we have, um, you know, our twenty-fifth percentile, our fiftieth percentile, our seventy-fifth, and our hundredth percentiles. And so the plot here is the normal distribution at zero being the 50th percentile, negative one being the 25th percentile, and negative two being the zero or the first percentile, really. And then one and two being the exact opposites. OK, and that's plotted against your actual raw data quantiles uh, of your sample. Now, Jamovi does this a little bit differently. And but before I jump into Jamovi, I just want to explain what this helps us do. It helps us with uh, giving us a visual indication on whether or not our plot has some skewness, if our assumption of normality is accurate, but it is subjective because you're just reading dots against a y equals x line. Now, if the line is y equals x and your dots follow that y equals x line, you're pretty good. Pretty good. Roughly straight line means it's a linear relationship between the theoretical quantiles and your sample quantiles, but also that we can make the assumption that we did pull our sample from a normal distribution, from a theoretical normal distribution of this variable. And so what we're looking at is whether or not this line, the, these dots are straight, straight ish, or um, there might be some skew. And if there's some skew, uh, then we can take a look at which data points are aiding to that skew. So I'm going to pull this out and um, jump into Jamovi. OK, so we're, we're using. 2.3.3 for this example, and there were some uh, earlier versions that had some errors in their QQ plots. But if you would like to use QQ plots, um, you check the box. This is the only thing that I have up. Um, I just did a video on pair table C tests, which used the Chico, the Chico data set from Learning Statistics with Jamovi, as you can see here, data library LSJ hyphen data. Okay, and I just did the simple putting the variables in just so I could grab the QQ plot. So what this is showing you is the difference score between their first grade and their second grade, the sample. OK, and so we have our theoretical quantiles down here again, a normal distribution, theoretical normal distribution. But instead of plotting the um, sample statistics, it's actually plotting standardized residuals. OK, so it will plot a standardized residual. Essentially, this is a error 
term for each of the points in your data. And you can go through and you can count each of these points and it'll match up to however many that we have. So we have uh, 20 students. And so there are going to be 20 dots here. Okay. They're going to be 20 dots. And this Y equals X line is a good is a good line to have as a reference point because it gives you a line to then measure your dots against. And you can see here that we have a relatively straight line with the dots. Ignore the Y equals X line for a second and just take a look at the dots and see the kind of flow they follow. And we can verify by looking at these dots that, oh yeah, they're pretty normal. Uh, maybe slightly larger uh, tail values here at the, the tail end, uh, at the top and at the bottom as we move away from our zero point here, our means, okay? Maybe a little bit of, of skew out here at the positive, the right side of the distribution. But as you can see, our different score is normal. And that's what the shapiro built test does. But this is a comparison. And now let me give you a couple of other um, visualizations from some of the other data tests, data sets I've used uh, in these re recent videos. This is the Harpo Independent Samples T learning statistics with J uh, Jamovi data set. So again, from the same folks who did the Chico one, this is Harpo. So this is independent samples. This is the grade variable. Okay. And you can see that oh, there's maybe a little bit of skew, uh, maybe a longer tail here, maybe an outlier um, for this particular uh, data set, right? So this is our Y equals X line. And how well do my dots follow that line? How well are my dots? Again, standardized residuals. These are sort of like, these are sort of plotting the standard deviation for each of these scores. There's Z scores pretty much um, on the Y axis versus the theoretical values of a normal distribution. You can see, so you can see on the negative end, there's maybe a little bit of an outlier here. Okay. So that's another uh, thing that you can do that if we were to do a normality test would not tell you. So this is a pretty high W close to one. And you can see these dots do follow this Y equals X line very, very closely. But then we have this, uh, we have this little guy right here, this little guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So another one. Um, just to bring it into screen here. This is the IQ simulation uh, from the learning statistics with Jam Jamovi folk. They did a 10,000, 10,000 to find out. Um, and you can see histogram here is showing the density uh, people and their IQs. And you can see that this follows very, very closely the 100 IQ mean for everyone particularly. But here's the QQ plot. Theoretical quantiles versus standardized residuals. And you can see the vast majority follow this Y equals X line. And that's because we know a lot about this particular scale, this IQ scale. We know a lot about it. And so it makes sense that if we are testing people against the same scale over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, 10,000 different cases, that we are going to end up with a pretty solid line. Now, there are a few outliers, especially this little this little guy here, this little guy here. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. I don't have a Shapiro Wilk test for you, but I could grab one if I wanted to on this particular thing. But it really doesn't matter because this would be almost one. Um, and the only thing that's keeping it from being almost one is probably this one and maybe this one. And, and these might actually be more than one because this is, you know, 10,000 here. I don't know exactly. Now, a slightly weaker, a slightly weaker one that I want to pull up is the unbalanced ANOVA for the coffee data set, uh, coffee data set. And the reason why I call it unbalanced is if we go to the data library and open this up, if we scroll down here to coffee, coffee and babbling ANOVA, it's an unbalanced, which, which to me strikes, it strikes me, this categorization strikes me as a, as an unbalanced in, in particular. Uh, a an unbalanced and not potentially normal distribution. We only have, and, and if I get the Shapiro Wilk test, um, it is it is lower value. It is a lower value than anyone's any ones that we have seen um, recently, 0.94. And that's because there's a lot of variation in these lines. Like it's very it's very curvy. It almost looks like this particular QQ plot that we've got here, right? So it's very it, it doesn't match up to the Y equals X line as well. And that is indicated. Oh, excuse me. That is indicated here uh, rather importantly, right? So it's uh, it's got some it's got some it's got some skewness to it. It's not as good. It's not as good. We have a few outliers. We definitely have this outlier up here. We definitely have this outlier down here. And so if we were to remove those data points, what then would happen to this QQ plot? It's an interesting question that you could explore if you were concerned about your normality and whether or not you have not violated or violated that normality. And that's what QQ plots are in Jamovi. That's why you see them in every single uh, module that we do because they're useful plots. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave those down below. Thank you so much for watching.